YouTube. What is up, everybody? Welcome back to yet another episode of Toontown Rampa. We're getting it in. This is chapter two. We finished chapter one. The victim in the last chapter was Clara. The culprit was Clef. We need to move on and see who is going to be our victim in chapter two, ladies and gentlemen. Shouts out to Civ once again. This freaking fan get is amazing. Show them all the love in the world. And on top of that, hit that mm -hmm. like button for me for the YouTube algorithm. It really helps out. Let's do it. Dot, dot, dot. We're back with the dots. I suppose I should properly introduce myself. Oh, this person's back. Who are you? Who the f are you? I am known as Headless Horse Toon. Okay. I was summoned by a certain someone before the usual Halloween town time. And now I'm on a mission to figure out what the cogs are doing. The problem is I have no idea where to start. I've been left alone to gather my thoughts. I haven't been keeping up with the tune times. Probably not a good thing. Where did the boss go anyways? Well, Minion, have you materialized any plans? Ah, it seems you've returned, boss. Wait, who is that? Who is that? Oh, please. No need to still call me boss, headless horse tune. What the freak? The music and everything. You are my most loyal minion after all. That's most likely due to the others being them. Nevertheless, call me by my true name, Jack O'Chasm. I like that name. That's an awesome name. It's always the same. Very well, Jack. I said Jack O'Chasm, not just Jack. Oh, Ugh. but can I? What? Would you want me to just call you headless? Fair. Well, pushing that aside, you have come up with a plan, yes? Uh, hmm? No, not really. What? But you could at least ask Toons around if there's been anything strange happening. With this costume? <laughs> yeah, with that costume, I don't think anybody would want to have a conversation with you. Of course! And be in character, too. It's not that far away from Halloween anyways. Just pretend it's an early event. Uh, hmm, I suppose that works. However... Are you really not going to let the others know about your hunch about the cogs? Planning something bad, quote unquote? For the time being, yes. It's not that I trust the others less. You said you trusted me the most. Okay, look, you're just the most competent. Yeah. Point being, they're currently busy setting up this year's props anyhow. Either that or just lazing around. Probably the second option. So are you going to help me or just stay here? Look, I don't like the sunshine, if you didn't know. Judging by this room, I could never tell. <laughs> I love this back and forth between these two. It's funny. Well, now you do know. So go out there and ask Toons if anything has happened. That was... You know what? Fine. I suppose I might as well. Grand. I knew you'd understand. I suppose in the end, I always will. I like this back and forth between these two. It's so awesome. Just who could have sent that? But who are they, like, to us? Are they going to be, like, the evil people? Are they helping us? I'm still curious about that. Okay, here we go. I should probably try asking someone who actually has a degree in something. Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. You're here with us right now? There should be some scientists inside Toon Hall. Wait, hold on. Ignoring the odds looks around me, I walk into Toon Hall. Wait! Is he the new student? What the freak? Hmm. I wonder if any of those scientists are here. Um. Any scientist dwelling will be no match for my treats. <laughs> I love that sprite. Wait, no, it's tricks, not treats. Huh? Oh, someone wants a scientist? Yeah. Well, looks like I'm your guy. Wait, what the heck? Me, Dr. Dim. Oh, is it only you? Yep, just... Wait, whoa, neat costume. Where'd you buy it? I, uh, made it myself. That's really cool. Can I have it? No. <laughs> well, can't say I didn't try. Um, maybe a fence, but are you a real scientist? Yep, I might not have any formal training, but I make up for it. In what ways? Many! Uh, hmm? Wait, what is that thing he's holding? Um... What's that you're holding? Oh, you know, the silly reader. 
Silly reader. It measures silliness readings. Well, and other stuff, but I don't really care about those things. Isn't the silly meter out of commission? Yep. So, do you even need to carry that around all the time? Uh, nope. <laughs> what the heck? Hmm, he did say it has other features. Well, if you don't need it right now, would you mind if I borrowed it? Normally, the others would be here to say no. But too bad. You're cool looking, so I'll give it to you. You are an idiot, Dr. Dim. I don't even know who Dr. Dim is, but I'm sorry. You are dumb. He tossed me the device. Hope you have fun with it. Oh, cool. I guess I will. Since it is a radar of sorts, it probably can be used to transmit stuff too. Go nuts. Wow, that could actually be really good. Thank you. No problem. Just bring it back before we get the silly meter running again. You are so dumb, homie. <sighs> Why would you do that? And so I returned to base with this strange device I was given. Present day. Okay, so was that, that was in the past? I know you've somehow been trusted by the cogs, however. Oh. Was this seriously for the best? Wait, whoa, whoa, redacted, redacted, redacted. The plan has been going smoothly. Was there a reason to make them take the final exam so soon? Not only that, but did it have to be so destructive? You do know we're losing valuable data. What are you saying? I want to know. <sighs> I can't believe the higher ups agree to you being on this team. How do I even know you won't betray us? Ugh. Really? What point would there be to continue doing this? This is the final test, is it not? What are you saying? Huh. I suppose that's right. But I doubt no matter who lives, they'll be broken. Perfect. How? Huh. I still don't know how that'll work once this is all over, but fine. I'll trust you somehow. Know what you're doing. I don't know. It's a little sketchy. Who is that person? What are they saying? Obviously, that's got to be the mastermind, right? Chapter two, bond by fate and soul, the daily life. Let's do it, baby. Dot, dot, dot. We're back with the dots. It's been many hours since the trial. After what happened. That horrible event. Oh, that ended in both Clara and Clef dead. How do we move on from that? Ah! <laughs> Clef and Clara. Suddenly, I hear the faintest knock on my door. Reflexively, my body moved over to the door, and when I opened it... Hey, Flippy. Ah, hello, Tom. Seems like everyone else is in their huts. I can imagine. What are you doing here? Honestly, I don't know. I just thought you'd need some company. We we lost a good member of the Silly Street crew today, but we at least made it to the trial, right? I suppose so. It was tough, really tough, but we made it through. I just wish I spoke more, even if it was wrong. I only helped on accident. That's not true. Helping on accident is still helping. Bringing up how Clef could have been damaged another way made me realize how he drained himself. Without that, I don't think we would still be here right now. Clef would have gotten away with it, and no one else would be alive to tell the tale. So please, Tom, it doesn't matter if you feel smart or not. Everyone, including you, helped in that trial. Even if someone only brought up wrong theories, disproving them still brought us closer to the truth. Heck, I got a ton of things wrong, but everyone else helped guide us to the right track. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Are you sure you're not a therapist? I'm sure I'm not, but as someone once told me, you don't gotta be one to make someone's day. Oh, that is so true. That is true. I'm loving this. Wow, a beautiful quote right there. You don't gotta be one to make someone's day. I follow that every day. <laughs> Thanks, Flippy. I'm sure we'll never have to solve another case, especially after seeing what happens to those that get caught. Yeah. If someone thinks being boiled alive is worth killing, then... Uh, no, no one would do it. There's no reason to even think about someone doing it after what happened. I'm sure you're right, Flippy. Yeah. Hmm. Call it wishful thinking, but... I'm sure you'll keep us together, Flippy. I'll try my hardest, too, Tom. Well, I suppose this is good night. Good night, Flippy. Good night, Tom. Aw, they're such great friends. Hopefully Tom doesn't die. I... I really will make sure we stick together. For you, Clara. 
I'll never forget our bond. Oh, so sweet. That'd be such a great protagonist. Even though the nighttime announcement hadn't played yet, I'm still exhausted. I drifted into sleep quickly. Oh, the dots are back. They're back to haunt me. Oh, the ding dong, bing bong. It's the morning announcement. Attention all tunes. It is now 8 a.m. I have a special announcement to make. Meet at the plaza within 15 minutes. Oh, he's going to open up a playground, huh? Oh, no. Don't be another motive already. Regardless, I have to go. He's going to open up a new playground. The first tune I saw coming out of their house was actually... <sighs> oh, Harry, you got out quick. Don't talk to me. What? You and Paula always said no one would kill. That no one would snap. But guess what? Clef was planning to kill since he woke up two days ago. Harry, I... I'm only outside early because I stood at my door the entire night. If it wasn't a rule that I had to go to the meeting by Flunky, I'd still be inside. I'm going right back to my room after this. So, don't ever talk to me again if you're just going to lie. Oh my god, there's nothing that we can do, dude. Leave us alone. I never wanted what I said to become a lie. Oh god, Harry, just listen to me. Did you overhear that? I didn't mean to eavesdrop, but yes. I see. I suppose Harry has lost all trust in us. Or maybe even everyone. Yeah. Well, I suppose we cannot waste any more time. Let's go to the plaza, Flippy. Yeah, let's go. Oh my god, Harry. Get it through your thick skull. We're trying to help. Paul and I headed over to the plaza, with others coming out of their huts and following as well. It didn't take long for everyone to arrive. In fact, it probably took less than five minutes for all of us to gather. And in waiting for Flunky to appear above us. There we are. We simply stared at each other. After what seemed like forever, someone spoke up. Good morning, guys. <clears throat> yeah, good morning. Ugh. Everyone's so quiet. It's so tense. And just, and just when we thought we'd go into more silence. What's with all the gloom faces? It's already the next day, buckos. Yeah, it's the next day. So what? There's no point sulking over the past, buckos. We solved the mystery, everybody. You should be proud of yourselves. Proud of sentencing someone to their death? Someone who could have changed for the better, but now won't get the chance to? Oh, come on. He knew what he was getting himself into, didn't he? Perhaps, but our victory shouldn't be something we celebrate. For the sake of Clara and Clef, we have to promise each other we'll never have to partake in another trial ever again. That's not going to work. I believe that we can avoid further casualties. The question is, does everyone else feel the same way? Harry is evidence that I'm wrong. Can we just wait for Flunky to announce whatever he wants to tell us? We went through a lot yesterday. Agreed. Speaking of which, what's taking Flunky so long? It may not have been 15 minutes yet. However, you'd think his monitor would have begun broadcasting by now. Maybe we won't have a meeting after all? Okay, here, I have to say this real quick. Riggy is psycho. Riggy is nuts. I feel like Riggy is going to snap in this game. I don't know when. Maybe within the next two chapters. Maybe chapter four, chapter five. But Riggy just doesn't seem healthy at all. That's all I'm going to say. Ah, it seems you all took less time than I imagined. I'm surprised you all arrived so quickly. I would have thought after yesterday's trial, you all wouldn't have had any drive at all. Just get on with your message. I don't have to stay with these idiots any longer. Very well. Before anyone asks, no, this is not a motive announcement. That will happen soon. Even though you tunes don't deserve anything. For the sake of this final exam, we're going to let you explore past Toontown Central. More specifically, Donald's Dock. Hey! Wait, we're going to go, we're going to get to go to the dock? Don't look so happy. He just wants us to have a new place to kill in. Oh, right. But like, hey, we're finally going to get to go to someplace else. Let me guess, Toontown Central will be closed off as a countermeasure? To both of our surprises, no. However, as there is also a party hat building in the dock, I'll say this right now that it'll take you to the campsite. Of course, to not make anything overly confusing, the party hat building in TTC will no longer take you anywhere. That is all. Okay. I'm not going to trust that. I'm going to gather anything useful from my shop, just in case TTC gets closed off. I can't exactly think of anything I'd still need from the schoolhouse. Maybe pens and papers, I suppose. Flippy, do you need anything from your office? 
I don't think so. But if Toontown Central isn't blocked off, I'll check later. I have everything I need with me already. Kind of wish I could get to my house, but I guess I didn't really have anything there. Well, I had a little garden to grow flowers for squirting flowers, but I guess I could just make a new one later. I'm sure you, Coach Z, Flippy, and I will make some beautiful flowers in Daisy Garden. Oh yeah, you're right. Did you already forget about that? Maybe. Well, time to go, buckos. To the dock we go. I like this song. Yay! It's kind of funky. Ricky headed over to Punchline Place. <sighs> I guess I should just try to be like Ricky, but... It's like he doesn't even care about what happened. I know Clef killed Clara, but he was still part of the host crew. <sighs> uh, wait for me, Ricky. And there goes Bessie. Well, are you all just going to stand there? We need to follow them in case there's anything dangerous. You're right, Giggles. Sure. And so, aside from Lou and Pete, we headed to Punchline Place. Oh, look at that, that Mickey! Mickey's here! Oh, right. Harry wanted to immediately go back to his hut. But now he'll have to follow us at least to the dock. Here we go. And so we traveled through Punchline Place. We didn't say anything to each other. And eventually we caught up to Bessie and Riggy. However, right as we were about to check the entrance to Donald's dock, someone was lagging behind. <sighs> huh? Something wrong, Surly? Simply put, can we truly trust that nothing will be different than we remember it? Well, no. But we need to explore as many possibilities as we can. It's what Clara would want us to do. Perhaps there may be. However, we should stay realistic, Flippy. Yeah, you're probably right. Regardless, we shouldn't hold up the others for much. Ugh! Surly? Ugh. Uh. Surly, you okay? Ah, uh, apologies. I just felt a sudden shock. You seriously shook there. Was it just that? Uh. It's nothing to worry about, trust me. Ah, my clipboard. Hmm. I know this is sudden. However, could I stay behind? I want to see if Toontown Central really will be kept open or not. I mean, if you say so. You don't have to worry about me. I'll be back soon. Hmm. That was strange. Well, the others have been at the end of the street for a while. I should check up on them. Barnacle Boulevard, Donald's Dock. I love that name. Well, look at that. It is unlocked. I'm both excited and worried. Because it'll be safe, right? Only one way to find out. We just gotta go in. Nothing else we can do now. Here we go! Woohoo! Barnacle Boulevard! I love it. <laughs> and so we enter Donald's dock with hesitation. Lou and Pete are gathering whatever they can from their buildings. Surly is doing something. Our group of ten headed onwards. And the first thing we saw was... Whoa! This place looks awesome! The dock as I remember it. Well, here we are. Alrighty. Looks normal so far. Just because it looks normal so far doesn't mean we're in the clear. I'll go first, since I doubt our leader will, is willing to. Hey, come on! I was just taking a look around for a bit. Ugh. Wouldn't it be cool if this fangan was connected to Rompa and Friends? If they had some kind of like cool universe thing kind of going on? That'd be awesome. Come on, Giggles. Give them a break. I know you have a grudge against me, but please don't let that get in the way of exploration. Ugh. It's more than just that. Sure. Lead the way, leader. Thanks. I'll be honest. He is right that I'm not really that willing to go first, but I have to. The group comes first. Golly, that's some name for a shop. Hmm, you can't read the whole thing? It reads, Blackbeard's Beauty Parlor, Peg Legs Polished, Eye Patches Patched. Hey, I can read. That is so much, bro. That is so much. Say that 10 times fast. Blackbeard's Beauty Parlor, Peg Legs Polished, Eye Patches Patched. Just ignore him, dear. Really? Ignoring? How childish. With your treatment of Bessie and the rest of us, you should have seen this coming. You're only saying that since... Since what? Let me guess. Because he asked Flunky a question that saved Bessie from being suspected? Old man did his part. And even you helped clear Bessie. But you don't see old man treating Bessie like an idiot, do you? Flippy and I want to keep this group together. But if you keep pushing everyone away, treating them like garbage, then can you really be surprised that we're just going to end up ignoring you? Ugh. Just keep going. You're only saying that because you know it's true. Did you not hear me? I said to continue onward. 
I'll keep going. Huh. None of these doors open. Looks like it's the same as the streets in Toontown Central. Although we did skip a bunch of buildings on Silly Street. So maybe there were some buildings that could open. Even if that's the case, unless there's some magical escape portal in one of them, there's no point. And also, you didn't check all the buildings' doors? Well, no, but uh, like you said, there probably wouldn't have been anything inside. And hey, we still found something important. Yes, we know. The trapdoor system on that street. No, not just that. We found a blueprint about some sort of device. None of us besides Pete could even sort of read it. And even then, he could only read the first two letters of the device. So, you're saying that. You found something potentially useful for escape and didn't share it with us before? Oh, no! Giggles is gonna be so off about us now. <laughs> well, uh, I guess we didn't, but like Coach C said, we only knew the first two letters, R and E. Any information is valuable. You seriously thought a bl blueprint was not worth sharing? The other groups found nothing. That's... You're just always full of excuses, Flippy. Your anger is justifiable, gi Giggles, but don't point it towards Flippy. Point it towards me. I was the one that stopped the others from speaking of the blueprint. What? Flippy was about to tell you all about it before I ordered you all to investigate the trap doors on Silly Street. I knew he was going to tell you that because he said so before I stormed off in a rage because of Daisy Gardens being blocked off. Really? You were that sure Flippy was going to speak up about it? Because seeing how Flippy's memory was in the trial was even worse than mine. I doubt this excuse even impacted Flippy. That's... Hey, Flippy had to figure out some seriously difficult things. Like how someone who we cleared early was actually the culprit. It was a really stressful day, Giggles. Everyone forgot a lot of things. Ugh. Even so, Flippy was stumbling far too much for our leader, wouldn't you say? That's... That's not a fair argument. Then would you have been fine had Flippy completely directed us in the wrong track? That's only a hypothe- Hypo- 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 something! Hypothetical. Now let's keep moving. Ugh. The fact that no one else stepped into that conversation. Does everyone else feel this way about me? Ugh. Am I just an idiot who can't do anything right? I don't even know if I could call myself a leader at this point. Maybe there'll be something good soon. Hmm. Perhaps. Flippy acts a lot like Kaide. Like, as we're going through this, I'm feeling like Kaide right now. Uh, look, Giggles, something super good. An unlocked HQ. So it is. Let's take a fun look inside. Us three will. You all just stay out here for a few minutes. And so, those three went inside the HQ. Uh, hmm. It seems the burden of being the main leader has taken quite the toll on you, Flippy. You don't say... The question now is, what shall you do next? Continue leading this group or allow another to pick up the position? I, I don't know. Hey, one bad thing won't keep you down forever. Right, Flippy? I guess so. It's just that Giggles was right. I didn't lead us through the trial. Certainly an old man did. And if they did, that doesn't mean you didn't help us as well. Without those mistakes, we wouldn't have been able to figure out the truth. And besides, when push came to shove, you delivered. I guess so. Regardless, you're practically Flippy's right-hand man, yes? Yeah, I want to make sure no murders ever happen again. The problem is, how many of us see me as a good leader? Uh -huh. That is a question that you could only find out by asking others directly. After all, one should try to do the work themselves. Although, I suppose I cannot fault you for relying on Coach Z. Trust me, buddy. Flippy is not just relying on me. We help each other. Very well, then. Did you think getting help from others was a bad thing before? All I can say is, from what I've witnessed, only the tunes that paved their own path are the ones who achieve the greatest of successes. Regardless of what each of us believe in, let us wait for those three to re-emerge from the headquarters. Yeah, I suppose so. It only took a minute or two for Giggles and company to come out of the HQ. What could they have been looking at? Hmm. Well, uh, we didn't really find anything, Stranger Crew. I thought I heard something, but it probably was just the floor. It was mighty squeaky. Someone better do some upkeeping on it. Ugh. So then, you found nothing? Unless a squeaky floor counts as something. Nope, quite a bummer. Let's just keep going. I don't believe them. I think they're lying right now. Righto. Excuse me, Giggles. 
But are you simply going to brush past buildings that we haven't even tried opening yet? What do you mean brushing? Ugh. Giggles will realize he passed by three buildings. Uh, you're right. I'll check them. For someone who just berated Flippy for being utterly useless, you sure don't pay attention to two things, do you? Hmm. None of you buffoons are suitable leaders. Not a single one of you. You. Uh, I'll make sure to check every single one of these buildings. Huh. I see. While Giggles was checking the buildings nearby, someone approached us. I'm here. How much did I miss? Well, uh, not much, I guess. Are you sure? You all right, Tom? It was just Giggles being rude again. I tried to help Flippy, but I stumbled on my own words. That's all right, Tom. Everyone does that from time to time. Oh boy, I'm seeing a ship here, y'all. I'm seeing it. I might be tripping, but I'm seeing a ship. And we ain't talking about the ships in the background because we're at Donald's dock. Where's Giggles now? Just a bit ahead, checking all the doors. All right, then. Oh, Pete, did you see Surly or Lou? Hmm? Did Surly go somewhere? Yeah, he told me he wanted to check if TTC was going to stay open. Well, I don't think I saw him at all. As for Lou... Ugh, present. We look back from where we came from. Ha! Ah, got some more glue on your head. So you know how my shop is called Blue Glue Direct to You? I don't think I need to explain what happened when I tried to gather everything I could. So I figured that I might as well wash myself off at the dock, because I'll have to go there anyways. So why blue glue anyways? Literally just to be different. What did you think? Oh, ugh, no matter the color, it's still fun glue. Is blue your favorite color? Yeah. Pretty common favorite color, but it is what it is. Well, we should keep going. I'm supposed to be leading. Good. I need to get this glue out before it dries too much. Playground, Donald's Dock. No doors open, except for the HQ, which didn't even have anything. Nothing is going to help us. Maybe not here, dear, but perhaps somewhere else. Uh, hmm? Uh, look, guys, we're almost at the docks playground. Woohoo! Now we're talking. Lead the way, Bessie, old pal. Sure thing. Hmm. Well, here's Donald's dock. Yay, let's see what it looks like. We all went through the tunnel, and once we made it through, we got a boat! I'm home. Yay, Bessie's home. Ah, there's that nice ocean smell. Right, nice. Well, time to smell like it. Wait for me. Uh, Bessie, Lou only dipped his head. Wait, you didn't even, you don't even have a bikini on. Is she just dived right in? What do you think? You have eyes, no? Uh, yes, Mo, I do. They're right under my eyebrows, if you didn't know. Um, well, are we going to split into teams again? I assume there's nothing left on Barnacle Boulevard, yes? Hmm, I don't think so. But there's also Surly, who's just kind of missing. So maybe we should go get him. Well, since we're just doing that, we could do it by ourselves. Sure, Operation Go Get Surly commence. We'll be back with Surly eventually. You all can explore the other streets. And there goes those two. Oh boy! Time to pick the teams again. So who's going where? Well, Riggy, obviously Flippy should pick the teams this time. It's only fair since I basically did it last time. Oh, how funny. What? Firstly, I don't remember you making all the teams last time. In fact, I was the first one to suggest forming teams. Really now? Because from what I remember, Surly was the one that proposed the idea, not you. Secondly, why should I have to listen to Flippy? He was never officially elected as leader. And he basically is as mayor. We want to keep Flippy as our leader, right guys? Oh, really? You sure you're speaking for everyone? I support Flippy 100%. I won't believe a liar like Flippy. Oh my God, Harry. <laughs> yes, because he totally wasn't sad after he lost someone he got along with so well. <sighs> hmm, a change in leadership? Sure, who needs a stable government anyways? Seriously? Just because Flippy gives false hope from time to time doesn't mean we should just randomly pick a new leader. What? Do you want to be the new leader, Giggles? Is that it? And if I do? Because I'd make a much better leader. No, you wouldn't. Guys, please. Really? How so? Do you really want me to list out every single thing wrong about... 
Will you all just shut it? And out of nowhere, Mo stunned everyone into silence. Yo, this is chaos right now. There is so much going on. Everyone is just like on their own at this point. It's not looking good in chapter two. You all are absolutely unbearable. To those who want Flippy to remain being the leader, go with him onto Seaweed Street. The rest of us go to Lighthouse Lane. There, see how simple that was? <sighs> yeah, everyone's quiet. It seems you've surprised us all, Mo. The desire to steer the group. I wonder where it came from. You be quiet. I will be going to Lighthouse Lane now. You buffoons know which street to go on, depending on what you believe. Oh. To think just a few choice words from Coach Z would have motivated him to lead. Perhaps a helping hand to jumpstart one's sense of duty isn't so bad after all. Uh, I'm going with Mo. Hmm. Hmm. I think I'll do the same. Huh. Harry, Riggy, and Giggles all went through the Lighthouse Lane Tunnel. So I suppose the rest of us are going on to Seaweed Street? I would say so. However, I ponder, how would Mo attempt to lead a group composed of those he disliked before? Especially if one of those tunes is the same one that threatened he'd die first. Seriously? Is this a test of some sort? See who'd lead better? Ha! <laughs> As if Mo would ever be a good leader. Don't make me laugh. Giggles, I'm not surprised, but Riggy, Harry, and Old Man too? I expected this from Harry, considering what he said to Flippy this morning. Regardless, where's Bessie? Uh, kind of just been out of the water for a bit. I guess we're in teams of five again? Guess so. Man, I just lost my whole team. So I guess Mo of all tunes split us up. For Lighthouse Lane. It's Mo, Harry, Giggles, Riggy, and Old Man. And for Seaweed Street. Me, Coach Z, Lo, Kala, and Bessie. I can't keep this group together. Coach Z is here to help me, but... I suppose there's nothing else to do but venture into Seaweed Street. I'm such a bad leader, man! I can't lead for crap! This sucks. So, uh, we got the dock back. Woohoo! Wow, I'm so glad. Finally, we could do things like swimming. Yeah, see? You already got some cool ideas. Ugh. So let's get to our epic investigation. What? What is that? What's what? That tone. What in the world are you doing? Bessie, are you trying to act like Riggy? If so, then you better stop it. Riggy's the last tune you should be trying to be like. Yeah, true. Besides, you two barely even spent time together. We did, and uh, I'm not acting at all. Just keeping the mood up. Sure, uh, let's just start our investigation. Yep. This one is locked, and so is this one. I have a feeling that none of these doors will open, dear. Well, better to check them out than to not. The last thing I want is for Giggles to complain about us not checking stuff again. I know it may seem not good at all, especially with all the arguing we've done, but we just gotta keep moving forward. I suppose we should. There should be a tune headquarters located on every street, unless the cogs did something to change that. They better not have. Those cogs have messed with us enough. They better not have done something stupid to some of the HQs. I'd assume they wouldn't, though it's never an impossibility. Look, stranger crew, it's an HQ. Let's go in, pronto. Ugh. Bessie, is this your idea of cheering us up? Oh God, please stop, Bessie. Regardless, we went inside. No one in here. Hey, there's a whale! <laughs> whale and fish tank. Well, look at that, bucko. Nothing is better than... Okay, Bessie, can you please drop the riggy act? You're not fooling anyone. We literally just want to investigate this area in peace. This comedy routine isn't helping. Not one bit. Uh, okay. Yeah, this is not working out. Not one bit. Get it? Since it's a bit? Like a comedy bit? It's time to just shut that down, Bessie. Please stop! Uh, just search the HQ, Bessie. We began searching the building, but no matter where I searched, under the desk, looking through the glass panes, I couldn't find anything. I found nothing. Did anyone find anything? I did not, dear. Bessie, did you? Nah, but the floor is not as squeaky here than in the other HQ, so there's at least one good thing about this place. If the other team finds something in their HQ, I have a feeling I know what Giggles will say. 
I know this seems bad, Flippy, but... Uh... I got nothing. Well, hey. Better to admit you got nothing than to keep pretending to be Riggy. Why'd you even try to do that anyways? Riggy's a horrible role model. He doesn't care about any of his fellow tunes. What? He does care. He just doesn't show it much. You say that, but from that trial, all it seems he cares about is a fun game. Well, you have a point, but while we were making my costume for the pie throwing contest, he told me... Hmm, so then you loop it around that way and... Yowza! There we go. Wait, you got it? Nice! All in a day's work. Just got to get one more rubber band around these two sticks and your glasses will be done. You've been really cool helping me out with this, you know that. Though, you sure you're all right? You're still at 50 laugh. Ha! As if some laugh train would stop me. I think to myself, why let something bother me if I can just not let it? What do you mean by that? Simple. Sometimes I think to myself, whoa, that's a pretty bad, I bad thing. And when that happens, all you got to do is laugh it off. Just laugh it off? But what if it's something really bad? I know none of the stranger crew would ever murder, but still, what if it does happen? Oh, Bessie, all you gotta do is just be like any other citizen. Joke around and have fun. After all, that's the tune way. Ha, huh, nice one. That does not sound healthy at all. Riggy is shrugging everything off and just not taking anything seriously, not showing any emotion other than happiness. That's not good. Remember, the happiest people are sometimes the saddest people. <sighs> Wait, that didn't seem like a joke. What part of that sounded like a joke? Good point. Look, Bessie, old pal, we were all brought here for some reason, so we're obviously all special. To lose any of you, well, that would just be super bad. I mean, aren't we all probably some important tunes? So if we can't change our situation, why not just have fun with it? That's what a true tune would do. Besides, I'm usually the party host, not that, not the party goer. This is a pretty once in a lifetime offer. Hmm. Well, I don't know if you should treat this as another party. Yeah, please don't. What? You're not gonna say tens of tunes die at every one of your parties, right? Well, there have been a lot of trips to the hospital. Pretty sure I bought my own ambulance just for my parties. Yeesh, that crazy of parties? We're not gonna host something that dangerous, right? With only 15 tunes? Ha! Not a chance. Fair, fair. Anyways, let's finish this costume. Already ahead of you on that one, bucko. What? How? I've gotten pretty used to making costumes. Besides, this one was a super beginner level, level outfit. Here, put these leftover bands on too. I. Well, how do I look? Snazzy or super sassy? Ha! Just like a real host. Who knows, Bessie? Maybe you'll be the one to make it out of this game. Don't say that. I'm sure we'll find another way out of this. Perhaps we will, Bessie. Perhaps we will. And besides, I'm just messing with you. All right, Ricky. Though, maybe try to make it more obvious when you're joking, okay? No promises. Hmm. He said that? I don't know if he really meant it, but... I'd like to believe it, at least. So that explains why you imitated him, then. Trust me, it's not great when he acts like this. And it's definitely not when, when you do. Aight, then. It's just that... Even if it was just for a little bit, I felt a bond with my two fellow hosts. Left too. Even if Clef killed Clara and wanted to escape alone? <laughs> he was perfectly willing to get everyone killed. That includes you, you know. I... I guess you're right. There's a time and place for laughter, but right now, do you think that you should just laugh this off? No. If anything, that would be just wrong. We appreciated your efforts in cheering us up. However, unfortunately, laughter isn't always the best medicine. I agree with that. I can relate, Bessie. Clara and I never gave up on escape, but... We were wrong, and now Clara is... Ugh. She's dead, and Clef, I'll never forgive him. Killing someone over an accident? Someone like that shouldn't have even made it to the first trial. <sighs> I want to say something to that, but no one spoke up after that statement, except for... We should hurry up and check the doors on the street, even if it'll probably be blocked off just like Silly Street. Yeah, you're right, Code C. Let's go, everyone. I don't know. This doesn't sound good, guys. There's just too much chaos going on. Heading back outside. The able-bodied gym. I'm way past due for another actual workout. But... Yeah, locked. Not surprised. Well, you tried. Congrats. We should keep on going, guys. Don't need to tell me twice. 
Oh, I'm pretty sure there's a pond back there. I believe so, Bessie. And? Don't tell me we're going to go fishing right now. We can just do that later. We kind of need to get back at a reasonable time. Besides, knowing my luck, I'd somehow fish up glue or something stupid like that. So we should just get to the end of the street already. Aight, right, fair point. Well, Daisy Garden's just around the corner. Silly tells me it's going to be blocked anyway. Just like on Silly Street. Well, only one way to find out, coach. We turned the corner without much expectations, and we found... Yep, it's locked. A blocked tunnel. Just like in Toontown Central. Ugh. Well, at least we got here. It's one thing to be denied once, but twice? I swear if there's another way to get to that funk flunky, he will pay. Maybe we can find a way to break those doors open. There's gotta be some sort of button, right? Maybe it's just really hidden. Yeah, no. As if Flunky would let us go to Daisy Gardens without another murder happening. Wait, do you think that Daisy Gardens would be unlocked next? It is where the invasion of Cogs was third easiest to deal with. That would make sense, but... I bet Flunky would only open it up unless another case happened. I suppose our garden will have to wait, Coach C. That's perfectly fine by me. After all, what's most important to us is preventing another murder from ever happening again. Because if we give Flunky what he wants, then we'd be just as bad as those cogs that kidnapped us. You're right, Coach C. Everyone saw what happened to Clef, and we have a decent amount of areas to explore. We could have been trapped in some factory, having to look at bland walls every day, but this is just Toontown. Exactly, Flippy. Even if we never escape, we can find comfort in our, our familiar surroundings. The only downer is what do Toons think happened to us? We might not know that, but we can only hope that they're taking the situation well. Well then, uh, I suppose we should probably get back to the playground. Maybe we'll get back there first. Yeah, let's do that. Want to lead the way, Flippy? Sure, Bessie. We all went back to the playground, hoping that the Toons be back home were safe. When we returned, a group of Toons were waiting for us. Oh, some of them are back. I assume the other five searched Lighthouse Lane? Yeah. Looks like you two found Surly. He was actually pretty easy to find. He was about ready to go into Punchline Place when we found him. So, Surly, did you fi figure out anything? No, there were not any indicators on whether or not Toontown Central would truly stay open or not. I suppose I should have expected that. I assume we can't venture further beyond TTC or Donald Sock. Yeah. Well, we could wait for the others near the HQ, since it's kind of cramped on these planks. Well, I'll go first. To the HQ, we go... Ow! Wait, what happened? Tom, oh, hold on! Tom, you okay? I'm fine. Just tripped on something, I think. Hmm? Okay, phew. Wait, was it that plank that you tripped on? Yeah, looks like it. Ah, I see. Everyone watch your step. Got it. Shouldn't we just push it down? I got this. Coach Z stomped on the board until it fit into place. I'm not too sure if that'll keep it there forever. However, at least no one will trip on it in the near future. Oh, that's going to be important later on. We already know, right, guys? Well, it's as simple as not pulling it, so we'd probably be fine. I'd assume no one would do that, yes? Uh, wait. I think the other group is returning. Let's move towards the HQ, then. Oh boy, here we go. We noticed that the HQ here was locked, just like how the TTC one was, but no one bothered to mention anything. And the other five tunes saw where we were and gathered around. Ugh. You could take a wild guess if we found anything or not. Here's a hint. It was nothing. Then it looks like it's just like before. Huh. Except this time, no one found any blueprints or documents. Or is someone hiding it again? I don't know. Maybe you are, Giggles. As if anyone would be after your annoying tantrum. Ugh. We've done all the investigating we could, right? There's no point searching elsewhere. Actually, there is. Chippendale's Acorn Acres. Hey! Because in it is a direct way to Boss Bot HQ, which I bet those stupid cogs are at. So we all better go. No expectations or no exceptions. Why should we just get ourselves killed? What? Do you th think that Flunky would just let us waltz in and trash the place? He'd probably just execute us on the spot. So what? You'd rather just not even try? Of course I'd rather not try. What? We all saw how Clef was executed. I don't want that happening to me. 
So if you want to go get yourself killed, leave me out of it. Harry spotted the party hack building just behind the HQ and ran into it. Hmm. As if Flunky would do that. Besides, what are the chances that the acres are even accessible? I bet that it's blocked by one of those idiotic barriers. Now that you say that. Giggles went to the tunnel and just as he tried to enter it. What the? Hmm. Not surprised I was correct. Great. Not only was there nothing to find on any of the streets, but I can't even get anywhere near Boss Bot HQ. Oh, boo-hoo. Cry me a river. Did you honestly expect anything useful? How pathetic. Oh, I'm pathetic? At least I'm trying to find things. If you're so adamant to get to that stupid flunky's lair, then just dig underneath the tunnel. Ugh. Oh, let me guess. You didn't even consider the thought. Uh, huh. This is why you're no leader, Giggles. And what? You are, Mo? Oh, please. Leadership is something idiotic. What's the point of leading those who won't listen? Uh, that's quite the view you have there, Mo. Someone who demands that doesn't believe in leaders. You buffoons start digging. I'm tired of dealing with you all. It seems Harry and Mo have left to do their own things once again. The question now is, what will you all do now? Will you see if digging underneath the barrier would allow you to access the acres? I wonder. I just don't know how to lift Harry's spirits. I can't even blame him. He was practically proven right with how Clef was planning to kill for over a day. <sighs> mm. Look, Bessie. I know I grilled you about still having some sort of connection to Clef. What he did was unforgivable, but I guess I can't blame you for how you feel. Clef was quite the tune, wasn't he? Seriously? What? We know what happened with Clef already. No point in dwelling over it anymore. The past is the past, after all. Ricky, is that really how you feel? Hmm? What do you mean? Are you really fine with what happened? I tried to look only forward, but I was really bad at it. You're like just acting right now, right? Hmm. Ha! Nothing I do is an act, Bessie O'Pal. Clef only wanted to host to kill Clara, and that's that. Gotta put it to him, what a plan. You. You just keep running your mouth like nothing is wrong. I swear you're the worst type of tune. Quite rude to say to someone right next to you. How about you back off before I knock you? Stop. Hmm? Stop what? I don't know. Just, Ricky, why are you saying these things? I thought... What? Am I wrong? Clef simply lost at the game, which is quite the bummer for him, but good for us. Yes, but you sound like, like you don't care at all. That's because he obviously doesn't. But... <sighs> Ricky, were you just lying when you said losing any of us would be super bad? Well, of course dying is pretty bad. You can't live after that. Besides, wouldn't you say that the mystery we had to solve was pretty interesting? Interesting? Is that all you felt about that case? Dude, this guy, I told you, he is not healthy. We, we lost Clara. Someone who didn't deserve to die. Uh, I really hope this is just an act, Riggy. Now, now you made Bessie upset. Riggy, you gotta get the hands now. You gotta get the hands, Riggy. Hmm. Well, I don't want to dig, so I'm gonna head out. Whatever, dude. Oh, I'm gonna give him a piece of my mi my mind. Uh, so, uh, should we start digging then? We don't have another choice. I have a sneaking suspicion that this barrier could span below the surface. However, perhaps I'm wrong. Better to try and fail than not try at all. Indeed. Yeah, no. I'm not gonna do this. With Lou leaving, it was only seven of us left. Wow, everybody just dipped. Again. Giggles, Tom, Surly, Paula, Pete, and I tried to dig for quite a while, but it was no use. Surly predicted right. No matter how far we dug, we couldn't get past whatever invisible barriers were set in stone. Eventually, look at that nice hole. Well, I suppose there was an attempt. Indeed. Does anyone have an idea how long we've been doing this? It wouldn't have been for much long, more than an hour. Giving up, we noticed someone was watching us. Huh. Wait, were you just standing there this whole time? Not the whole time. However, I have been here for the past 10 minutes or so. And you didn't bother to help? Even Flippy of all tunes helped out. Oh, shut up, Giggles. Gee, thanks. Like Surly stated, I believe that no matter how far down you dug, you would not achieve results. However, I wondered, how much time would you all be willing to spend on a task that deals no rewards? On our journey throughout Lighthouse Lane, Mo showed nearly zero interest in actually exploring for himself. 
whether out of laziness, selfishness, or any other reason, who knows? Seeing now how this group of tunes is willing to dig for quite some time, perhaps I was wrong to temporarily follow Mo. Hmm. Huh. Not believing we could do anything, and yet he still watched us. Hmm. There goes Surly. I can't grasp what he's trying to teach us. Regardless, perhaps Harry would be willing to talk now? And with Apollo leaving, it was just us three, standing next to a hole to nowhere. Well, uh, maybe we could play a game using this hole? We dug for quite a while. Let's fill it in first. Oops. Yeah. I could definitely use a random game right now. Man, we are at rock bottom, y'all. Rock bottom. By the time we got the hole filled up, we were so tired that we ended up laying on the ground. Oh, oh, this is adorable. I love this. Ooh, I'm pooped. Ah, Tom, your ear is a... Uh, huh? Something wrong with my ear? It's touching, it's touching the ship, the ship, it's sailing, it's sailing, guys, it's sailing. No, no, nothing. Just haven't ever laid down on the ground like this. Ah, okay. I thought I had something in it or something. No, no, you're perfectly fine, Tom. Oh, snap! Oh, Flippy, how have you been feeling? Well, to be honest, not good at all. Eh, I feel as though in that investigation, the trial, and especially now, you've become more cheerful than me. I have? Well, you have been able to keep your spirits consistent. Because, <laughs> uh, we've kind of been falling apart. Well, during the investigation, he told me something personal. Oh, I, uh, told that to Tom, too. Ah, uh, I see. I know saying sorry for you having to see a dead body before doesn't make sense, but yeah. You think we'll never know more about our past? Honestly, I don't know if I want to know. Fair, but I'd rather know why Giggles hates me so much. I guess so, but if I knew more about how I lost someone I knew, I'd probably be feeling a lot worse right now. Maybe I want to face whatever happened later, but definitely not right now in a killing game. Yeah, I guess I should focus on what's happening right now. Well, hey, at least we're still here. Though, guess I shouldn't jinx it. Yeah, maybe we should get up now. This terrain isn't really that comfortable. Got it. Oh, that's just so, that was such a wholesome moment. We had Tom and Pete touching each other and such like that. It's amazing. Us three got back up. Think we should check the gag shop just to see what's inside? Well, we don't have much else to do. Sure, what Flippy said. Monkey wouldn't put anything bad inside, right? I doubt it. Yeah, you're right. We all stepped inside. Money bags! So, looks like there's a bunch of money here, too. I don't get why there's a random money in both this gag shop and the one in Toontown Central. There's a Goofy in the back. I like that. I got no guesses on why that is. Either of you have anything? Uh. Well, I assume you found the gag shop. Were you able to figure out why there's a bunch of cog books in the store? Nope. Well, that's unfortunate. I've been going around asking everyone with no success. Gotta say, there's a lot more of us here than I'd expect. Tell me about it. I honestly thought it was only me and Tom for a bit. <sighs> I will find out how this all happened, Clara. For your sake. Hey, Flippy. You okay there? Ah, yes. Yeah, sorry. Just can't think of anything. Well, unfortunately, it doesn't appear that there's much to discover here. I can't get behind these walls of money. Should we try lifting someone over to see if someone something's behind there? I can lift Pete. Uh, you don't have to do that. Oh, he's blushing. I'm the tallest. We could just move the couch over to the wall of money. Oh yeah, that could work too. You just wanted to touch Pete. That's what it was. Tom and I moved the couch over to for Pete and he was just barely able to look over the shelves. But after a quick look around, he shook his head and we put the couch back where it used to be. Ah, oh, man. Guess there wasn't anything special about this gag shop then. Doesn't seem like it. Well, at least we now know there's nothing hidden behind. Is that the nighttime? Attention all tunes, come to Two Town Sigils Plaza for an announcement. Oh, oh no. It's not the motive already, right? I, I don't think so. I say that, but my heart was already racing. No matter what the announcement is for, we don't have a choice. We have to go now. Got it. Dang. If it is a motive, that'd be crazy. Us three went through both Barnacle Boulevard and Punchline Place at a brisk walk, reaching the plaza in only a few minutes. We were the first ones there. 
But it didn't take long for the others to arrive. And with everyone present, a modder once again descended. For having to go from your huts all the way to here, I must say, I'm pleasantly surprised it didn't take you that long. Ugh. Just shut it, you cog. Tell us why we have to be here. Oh, such confidence. I wonder where that will go. After all, this is the motive announcement. Ah, it's so motive! But it's only been a day since the previous trial. Why would you do this already? Quite simple. This motive works best by being activated for as much time as possible. Oh, no. Speaking of which, I'll announce it now. We instinctively braced for whatever Flunky had to say. The motive is as follows. What if you could murder someone without risk of an execution? What? There's no freaking way! Uh. Hmm? Huh? That's... What do you mean by this, Flunky? Oh, obviously you can't just kill anyone to get off scot-free. Okay, okay, okay. We're listening. This will be the second trial, no? So what better way to celebrate that than to split you tunes into pairs? These pairs will be either a tune you trust, someone you hate, or perhaps even someone you barely know. I made sure there'd be a variety of the types of pairs, and not necessarily an even amount of them. Great. A partner system. How does this even work? The first portion of this pairing rule is simple. If you kill your partner, even if you are found out, you won't be executed, only harmed. Secondly, if you kill someone else, as long as your partner knows you are the killer, your partner won't get executed with the other innocents if you two could keep suspicion off the one that killed. Finally, if you and your partner kill another pair, one tune each, then not only would the others have to figure out both killers to avoid execution, they need to figure out who killed who. Oh my god. This is one of the best motives I've ever seen. I love it. And even if the innocents find out who killed who, both culprits would get to live on. Hey, <laughs> will you cooperate with their partner or off them? The choice is yours. This is a really good motive. So in other words, you're opening up the opportunity for two tunes to work together on a murder. Huh? Wasn't there a rule that stated only one tune could leave? We'll get there when we inevitably get there. Yowza, maybe it'll be a one-on-one -on -one duel. Don't you dare be getting any ideas. Uh, what about the 13th tune? There is an odd number, Flunky. Wait, yeah, unless there'll be a group of three. I already have a clause for them. Simply put, one of you won't get a partner. If you get killed, then your killer will have a chance at surviving their execution if they're caught. Really? Also, you'll know who your partner is tomorrow. You'll be allowed to share who your partner is with others. However, do you really think that would be a smart decision? That is all. For now, at least. Pairs. This motive incentives a pair working together to kill another pair. Hmm. How? How do we deal with this? Something horrible is going to happen, and... Could I even stop it? So, this is Flunky's plan. With the scarring nature of seeing someone be executed in such a brutal way, his next motive provides clauses that allow one to avoid such a fate? I see. And to top it off, it encourages two tunes to work together. Hmm. Old man walked away, saying nothing more. Well, but even if someone could not get executed, the only way to not be killed or harmed would be if a pair kills another pair. And like, wouldn't that be difficult to do? That is true. And any other clause states that any killer would at least be seriously harmed, no? So we're gonna be okay then? That's only if they get caught, no? The main rules of the game still stand. If someone were to get away with murder, then they win, no? And considering how most of you idiots stumbled through that trial, with an accomplice being an option now, another murder is almost certain, no? No one is thinking about working together to harm someone, right? Hmm, I wonder. Wait, how will we know who our partner is? Perhaps through a dream again? Lucky stated that we'll know by tomorrow, yes? Uh, then I'm going home. Uh, so, what about everyone else? Old Man and Harry are already gone. I believe our best plan of action is to simply go back to our huts, too. The only way we'll find out who our partner is is by calling it a day. You're right, Pete. Huh. Sending us off with no actual plan? And you call yourself the ultimate mayor. Uh, Whatever. I'm tired today anyways. The rest of us simply walked back to the huts. But before I left. 
Flippy, could you stay behind for a second? Huh? What is it? Uh, certainly seem to be hesitating. I have but one question for you. What year is it? Hmm? The year? I mean, as far as I'm concerned, it's 2013, no? <gasps> Wait, what? Why is that bad? It's bad, apparently. Uh, Surly? Uh, yes, I suppose so. Perhaps I lost track of the time. That must be it. Did you think it was another year? No. Simply put, I did not know what year it was. The combination of spending so much time experimenting in the memory loss we were given. Maybe the year was important to those around you? Memories of others were muddled as much as possible? Perhaps you're right, Flippy. Very well. Thank you for your answer. We should head back now. I'm getting some 999 vibes here. If you say so, Surly. Just a little bit. Surly and I made it back to the huts, and I entered mine. I feel like Surly wouldn't ask that question for no reason, but I can't think why he would. I stared at my wall for a while. I don't even know why. I don't even know if I want to go to sleep or not, because if we really will know who our partner is by tomorrow, what if they try to make us hate them? Or maybe we'll know some other way? Maybe a note included in the daily meal? I just don't know. Maybe I'm just not smart enough to make a good guess. Uh. Huh? Who's there? I pressed my ear at the door. I wonder if he's still awake. Oh, it's Pete. Oh, it's Pete. Hello, Flippy. What brings you here? Well, not much. I just wanted to make sure you're okay. With the motor starting tomorrow, we have to be prepared in any way we can. You're right, Pete. But what can we do? Well, perhaps putting in place some sort of self-imposed rules could work. The problem with that is, how many would actually follow them? Maybe the threat of a motive would motivate the others to follow them? But wouldn't putting a bunch of rules seem overly bossy? I doubt a lot of them would even listen to what I'd have to say. Really? Not just giggles? A lot of tunes have just completely stopped trusting me. Pete, you didn't see the most of it since you were absent a decent chunk of our investigation. Ah, right. I suppose I was. Though, if they wouldn't listen to you, then I'll do it. Hey, Pete's stepping up to the plate. You want to try managing everyone? Well, I don't exactly want to do it, but if it helps secure those we care about, I'll do it. Any way we could stop a case from happening, we have to do all we can. Someone we care about. I have a feeling I know who Pete is talking about, at least in his eyes. Then I'll stand beside you, Pete. Thank you, Flippy. Well, I suppose I should let you rest now. Let's just hope whoever our partner is, we're not made to hate them or something. Oh my god, I love Pete! Pete left my hut, and with nothing else to do, I fell asleep. I think Pete has become my favorite character in this game thus far. Here we go. Well, well, well. The motive has now officially started. I didn't have some sort of dream. I guess I don't have a partner then. Wait, don't tell me. Am I the... Wait, I feel like there's something on my right shoulder. Or wait, what? Hold on. Is it taped onto me? What can be taped onto my shoulder? It took a bit of effort to rip it off with my left hand. Ow, that hurt a bit, but I finally got it off. What's on this piece of something? Wait, this is Coach Zucchini. That's what Z stands for. Okay. My partner. So I got Coach Z. Okay, phew. That's someone I trust. But I shouldn't let anyone else see this. I put the sticker. I think it's a sort of sticker back on my shoulder. I can't really tell what this thing is made of, but it doesn't seem easy to tear. The question now is, when could I meet up with Coach Z about this? Well, regarding that, I don't know how many tunes will be going to TTC for our morning meeting, though I might as well go. I made my way over to the TTC Plaza. Seems I was the first to arrive, though less than a minute after I got here. Oh, hey, Flippy. Guess we're the first two here. The last time we were one of the first ones here. We were actually the first ones and following us. Oh, no, no, no. Flippy's down now. Uh, Little did we know, Clara was already gone by then. Ugh, I just wish I could have done something about that. Guess there isn't much to talk about, is there? Uh, sorry, Bessie. Just thinking to myself. Let me guess. The motive and stuff? Uh, yeah. Well, hmm. Maybe there's something we could do to lift everyone's spirits. But the last time that happened, things went horribly wrong. Oh, the pie event. Although, I don't have my drop buttons anymore. So maybe there's no way to lose laugh? 
You don't have your gags anymore? No. I think they were taken sometime during the night. It was by Flunky, right? Not anyone else. Ah, so that's where you two were. <laughs> Hi, Riggy. Well, someone is elated to see me. What about you, Flippy? Uh, hi, Riggy. Well, that's no way to start off the day. Especially since the motive finally started. It, uh, sure did. Wait, Riggy, what do you mean? So there's, so there's where you two were. Is everyone someplace else? Yep. Mo stopped everyone from going to TTC, since apparently meeting up next to the docks HQ makes more sense and stuff. And I gotta agree with that, Buckos. So let's go back. Well, guess we know where everyone else is. And, uh, about potentially doing something. Maybe once we split up, you could gather a few tunes to go swimming? Oh, that's what you want to do? Yeah, I think it'd be a lot of fun. Sure, let's just make it only a few of us. Got it. Anyways, we should probably go back. Indeed. A pool party sounds like a really bad idea. Bessie and I caught up to Riggy once we got to where everyone else was. You... You can't just do this. Really? And what amazing ideas do you have? I just wanted to implement a randomized duo system to make sure no one would try anything. Really? And if one of those randomized duos just so happened to be an actual duo? If you want actual results, you'll do the things the correct way. My way. But what you want is for everyone to have the same schedule every day. Uh-oh. What did I just walk into? What's this talk about a schedule? Oh, look who it is. The late mayor of Toontown. Let me guess. You're also going to complain about what is literally the perfect plan? How would controlling every part of our lives be perfect? Oh, no. He's turning into a dictator. That's just the type of tune Mo is. What? The type of tune that's actually willing to state the cold, hard truth? Go ahead. Do whatever you please, then. Just know that without rigorous control, all you'll find is a dead body within a few days. That's exactly correct. And you don't want to admit it. <sighs> well, you all heard him. And considering how this motive works, I have to agree with this plan. But we can't just start a regime this strict. And? Got any better ideas, or do you want to see a dead body show up? Of course I don't, but this isn't the way to go. No good plans again, Flippy. I... I swear, those two are just so annoying. We can figure something out. I just know we can. Yeah, we just gotta think. The question is, is there really an alternative? Hmm. Well, I'm sure that we could figure out a good alt. There's... There's no good alternative. You could all say whatever you want, but you all know what'll happen if we don't do something drastic. Is that what you truly believe? Yes, I'm... I'm not going to be fooled again. Oh, God, Harry, let it rest! I see. So that's your belief, then. Well, old man, aren't you going to say something like, you got to stop thinking about the killing game? Harry is totally bringing down the mood. I don't believe that any words could pers persuade Harry otherwise at the moment. Only he can change his ways. Ugh. Pfft. It's never impossible to change a tune. All you got to do is smile on. Even if that may come easy to you, Ricky, please give Harry his space. Everything we've had to go through thus far was, well, taxing, to say the least. Yep, especially, well, the trial. But, uh, hey, Harry, I was the suspect too. So don't take it personally. They were trying to find the culprit. And, well, figuring out that someone I wanted to know better did that. Yeah, that was pretty bad. No, like, super bad. Even if he only did something so evil because of a motive, he wanted to get away with it. I know I'm not really good at deep conversations, but after what Coach Z said to me, how Clef was willing to kill all of us, I didn't know what to say because he was right. Clef only wanted revenge, no matter the cost. Ugh. I know my attempts at raising morale have just been backfiring, but I don't know what else to do. And yet, even after everything that's happened, I still want to believe in all you guys. Aww, Bessie, we love you. I'm sure there's a way we can all trust each other, right? No matter what the motive says, can we really believe Flunky would let someone go? Indeed. So please, Harry, you have to trust us. I know the situation is terrifying for you, because we all feel that way. Some of us have been pushing others away, or trying to take control, because we're scared. So don't think you have to go through this game alone, Harry. Oh, the Persona music in the background, bro. Stop it. Huh? You... You really think we can trust each other? Especially now that there's multiple ways to avoid execution? That... That mindset of yours. It's just gonna get you killed next. 
Ugh. The desire to take control and being a total coward. How peculiar. And yet such an overlap makes complete sense. Old man continued to mutter to himself as he walked away. I... I have to make sure he's safe. Well, this turned out the opposite of great. Well, it uh didn't go horribly. I suppose so. I can tell you for sure that it's not your fault, Bessie. Maybe we do need some sort of control. But we can only feel comfortable taking such measures if we actually trust each other. Couldn't have said it better myself, Coach Z. If the biggest obstacle is a lack of trust in each other, maybe we could do something casual, like fishing perhaps. Maybe when there's less tunes, Flippy. Hmm, did somebody disappear? Huh? What do you mean? We all looked around to realize Surly had left as well. Surly is always disappearing this chapter. What's going on with Surly? Ah, so Surly was the one who did a magic trick then. Well, I better ask him how he did it. I, uh, don't think it was a trick. He probably just walked away at some point. Well, good thing he's gone. I guess I can't blame you for thinking that way. You don't need me to repeat how I feel about Riggy. I feel like he's going to do something stupid. Seriously stupid. It don't say. Maybe I should talk to him. But the big problem is, I don't know if talking to him would do anything. Well, it wasn't exactly much of a conversation, but I've talked to him one-on-one -on -one before. Maybe I can help talk with him? I mean, go ahead if you want to, but I doubt you'll get anywhere. Well, it's at least worth a shot, right? I suppose so. Okay, so what do we do then? Uh... Oh, I guess if you guys wanted to, you could prepare yourselves. For a small little swimming thing. A uh, swimming thing? I, uh, don't really know how to swim. Oh, then we could teach you. Indeed. Swimming is a good skill to have. Well, you guys prepare or something. I'll just be waiting here. Got it. Bessie and I prepared ourselves to talk to Riggy. And once we made it to his hut. Well, here we go. Should be his hut. Uh, we waited for a moment then. Here we go. Ah, Bessie, old pal. How's it going? Oh, and Flippy's here too. Yep, it's me. Well, what are you two here for? I couldn't find Surly. Look, we just want to know. I know you said this when a lot more of us were around, but... Is this really not an act? Please, you can be honest with us. Uh, so that's why you got me out of my hut. Well, I mean, that's an easy one. I'm just being a good example for the rest of us. Being jolly and having fun. I'm so over this, this, this act, this routine. Nobody cares about you being happy. After all, what's the point of being glum all the time? Don't think I haven't seen your mood drop and drop, you two. Well, I mean, two tunes died, Riggy. How could we just be okay with that? And you just brushing everything off like it's nothing. How could that be right in any way? You say it's too set a good example for us, but how could pretending these deaths don't mean anything be okay? Uh, and how about this, bucko? Unless you know a way you could change our circumstances, why bother feeling down about the current one? Uh, well, that was a bust, huh? Yep. I guess we tried, at least. But I still want to believe what he told me when he was drained. Maybe his laugh drain back then brought down his, uh, happy wall of lies? Perhaps you're right. I want to believe in the good of all tunes, too, Bessie. Heh. <laughs> guess we got something in common, then. Are we friends now? Well, I guess we could try and find something for Pete, since he's not a good swimmer. Yeah, I guess we could. But as we were heading back... Ah, uh, you two are still here. yep Aroni. Lou sent me to get something buoyant for Pete. And well, I might as well check up on you two as well. Though, let me guess. Riggy was the same as always. Yeah, pretty much. Hm. He better change his ways sooner rather than later. Well, I can start prepping Pete to swim. You two could find something for him. So, have fun, you two. Uh, Alright, look. I'm glad we repaired up, however. Would it be a good strategy to stick together? What do you mean? It makes perfect sense for us to stick together, considering what we've done so far. However, what are the chances a malicious pair takes advantage of that? <sighs> you mean a pair that would want to kill another pair? Obviously, no two tunes could do such a horrible thing. But we have to be cautious here, Flippy. So, what say you? For the sake of our safety, it makes sense to stay apart. However, would us staying apart seem suspicious? He made your decision yet? Better to know now than later. I feel like the smart thing to do. Oh crap, we're making a decision here. This sucks. 
All right, should we stick together or should we spend more time with others? Oh boy, oh boy. I feel like we should probably stick together, but then at the same time, I'm leaning towards spend more time with others because it's like, maybe we need to find out who's working together and you know, spending time with others might help us find out who's working with who. Ah, uh, but what if Coach Z dies if I don't stick with him? I'm going with stick together. Crap, I'm probably gonna get kicked in the butt for that. Let's stick together. Got it. Let's make sure to protect each other, all right? We'll make sure of it. I trust you wholeheartedly, Coach C. Same to you, Flippy. So let's find Pete something to hold on to. Right, leader? Eh, sure thing, co-leader. Well, let's get to it, Flippy. I hope I didn't pick a bad decision here. We found a suitable branch for Pete, and we made it back to where Bessie and the others were. Hey, they're back! Did you find something for Pete? It's not much, however. We can make it work. I'll just need help from Tom as well. Ooh, okay. Um, are you two going to be holding my arms or something? I appreciate the gesture, but I don't want to be a hassle. Why not just use the loose board right over there? Pretty sure that would float a lot better. Oh yeah, you're right. Maybe, but do we really want to damage that ramp even more than it already is? Oh, hmm. Eh. Oh, I know a good alternative to swimming. The boat. The boat? Yeah, you know. That boat over there, it's been going around and around. Doesn't look like anyone's in it though. Maybe it's automatic? Oh snap. So like a robot? Ugh, would we really want to be on something that's alike to Flunky? Oh please, as if that boat looks anything like that stupid Flunky. Yeah, pretty sure it looks like the boat I remember. Just not with a driver. Well, it seems relatively safe. The railings seem adequate. Don't worry, Pete, we'll just be careful. Well, if everyone else is fine with it, Guess I got nothing better to do. The boat sounds fine, Bessie. Alrighty then, time for a coastal cruise. Yay, we're going on a boat, we're going on a boat. And so we all boarded the boat once it stopped at one of the piers and once it departed. Woo! And we're off. Ooh, Pete, there's a bunch of starfish in the water. Yeah, that's quite a lot more than I remember there being. Hmm. Well, it's not swimming. Getting to see the dock from here is neat. It's a bit disorienting, but yeah, I could get used to this. Well, thank you for the honesty. So, uh, why are you so excited for this, Tom? Why wouldn't I be? I've only done this like two times before. Really? I don't remember any payment required for this. Well, I've just always been so busy with my work. So getting to do something like this is a super rarity. Well, I'm glad you find this so much fun, Tom. It's nice seeing Bessie this happy again. It's felt like it's been a while that she was able to be, well, not burdened with everything that's been going on. Not just the killing game as a whole, but Riggy and Clef. We're honestly in a more similar situation than I expected to be in. I have Coach Z to help me, so I guess I'm doing better than her. I just... Losing Clara, it was horrible. So, how long are we going to do this? As long as you'd like. I could stay here all day. All day? I mean, if you like, I could stay here as well. Aw, that's so sweet. Sure. Yeah, no. I'm gonna get off in like, at most, 10, 10 minutes. But you'll miss the tour. Tour? You know, like, there's the pet shop, which pretty sure is closed, but it's still a nice shade of red. Or the trolley, which maybe we could go on now. Huh? You're right. Maybe if laugh isn't a problem anymore, we'd be allowed on? Trolley games would be good for training. And lots of fun, too. Yay, we're actually bonding. Bessie gave a seaside tour of the entire playground, though not before Lou exited the boat at the next pier. Sharing so many fun facts, even I didn't even know all of them. When it's something she's passionate about, Bessie truly shines, doesn't she? Bessie's a great character, man. She's so optimistic, you gotta love it. Eventually, the tour ended and the rest of us got off the boat. Took you long enough. You could have stayed on the boat, you know. Fair enough. Well, uh, I had fun, and I'm pretty sure Pete did too. Yeah, you, uh, didn't need to always be patting my back. <laughs> ah! All the touching. Oh, oops. Was that not comfortable? Ah, no, it was fine. Oh, the blasting is back! I meant as in, uh, didn't want your arms to feel all sore from lifting them up so often. 
Oh, then no worries, Pete. I might not look too strong, but I've got a pretty good arm training. Really? Well, nothing formal. Just kind of naturally wave my arms a lot, explaining things to tunes. Well, hey, getting exercise just from doing your daily activities is pretty efficient. So if you want to get more serious, I could offer you some classes. Hmm. Maybe. I'll think about it. That's a bit tempting, though I'll probably stick to just pacing back and forth on accident. As in, just something I naturally do, whether reading something or teaching something to others. Hmm. Then maybe we could pace around and wave our arms like crazy. <laughs> Perhaps we could, Tom. Perhaps we could. Well, I'm glad that a good amount of you liked listening to my tour. I just kind of wish it didn't have to be in these pretty scary times. We'll get back at that flunky, no matter what. Whatever you say, coach. My question is, what have the others been doing? Everyone keeps going off to do their own thing. It could have to do with the motive. It's possible that pairs are meeting up with one another. Oh, right. The partner thing. Hmm. Someone we either trust, hate, or don't know. That's practically saying anything goes, with maybe some few exceptions. Yep. You can say that again. Hmm. We just got a trusty... Which announcement is that? Oh, great. What is it now? Attention all tunes. I have a very short announcement. Simply put, somewhere in the dock, you'll find a very special item. Whichever pair obtains it, will have a much easier time knocking out another pair. Wait, what? You'll know what the item is if it has an interesting label. That is all. Happy findings. An item? That doesn't sound super good. More ways to entice a pair. Oh, crap. Suddenly, we heard footsteps from the party hat building. So, Flunky continues to provide extra motives for us, no? Hm, so be it. I'm gonna find whatever he hit and destroy it. Oh, hello, you all. Hello, Paula. Not only hello, Paula, but hello to this rather sizable group. Hm, look who it is. Are you just never gonna let what could be a lie go? Oh, I'm sorry for being cautious around a potential dictator. Are you being serious? Flippy's the dictator and not the guy who literally told us to follow his every single word? Hello! I'm glad that Sticky Lou understands. Somebody gets it. Mo is the one that wants to be the dictator, not me. Okay. And did Flippy come up with any ideas? Ugh. Exactly. But we've been busy having a nice boat tour. Boat tour? Oh no. You've all just been spending your time riding a boat and trying to come up with a different plan? And you were the biggest complainers about Moe's plan, too. Some dedication. Hmm. Man, shut up, Giggles! I'm getting sick of you. Now, have you made any changes to Moe's? What Coach said. No, because it's the smartest plan. Oh, really? You see no problems with Moe having all the power? You can't seriously have forgotten how he's been treating us, Giggles. I see no problem with it. No problem? It's one thing to be stern, but it's another to just be a plain jerk. I could definitely say Mo falls under the jerk category. Maybe he was right that the randomized duos was a bad idea, but we could just modify it to be bigger groups. Then how about we get everyone here so we can discuss this, no? Yeah, let's do that. I'll gather as many as I can. Here we go. I don't think anybody's gonna wanna discuss this, to be honest. It took a while to find any others. Though after an unusual amount of time, we could only find a few others. Here we go. In the end, we can only find Riggy and Mo. That's it? Surly and Harry were somewhere. Well, what was so important? Did you buffoons finally have an actual rebuttal? Look, Mo, I know how important it is to keep everyone safe. I know that. But we can compromise. A compromise? Really? If we instead separate into groups of four or so, if any incidents did happen, it'd be obvious who'd be responsible, no? Hmm. I would have said I'm surprised you actually thought of an improvement from your original plan. However, you literally could not have gone anywhere but up. Well, Professor, if you're so sure about this plan of yours, then who would be on what team? There's only 13 of us. I know. I want to be with the funny tunes that haven't showed up yet. Harry and Surly? Why exactly? Well, those two keep evaporating. I want to know their tricks for a future party back home. <sighs> um, I'll join you, Ricky. Huh. Well, there's one group, Pete. Care to actually pick one for yourself? Just because he came up with the idea doesn't mean he has to choose everything. Newsflash, Mo. But not everyone wants to control every single thing of another tune's life, you know. Well, uh, maybe the boat tunes can stick together. Sounds good to me. Wasn't there six of you, though? 
Eh, you can count me out. I've had enough fun boat time. I wasn't planning on doing that for a while. And with that, the Silly Street crew can stick together. And Bessie joining us is a nice bonus. We can use the extra positivity. I'll try. Okay, so then who does that leave? Mo, Lou, Giggles, and Old Man, yes? What a great group. Oh, boo-hoo. Angry that Pete and his gang did what you asked, hmm? Hmm. Fine, you win this time. Well, team, I see no reason to try to venture any further to find this extra motive from Flunky, so I'm staying right here. To the other buffoons, I don't care what you do. Just investigate anywhere but here. Well, I know where I'm gonna go. To the huts! However, didn't Flunky state that the item is located in the dock? Although, I would like to find the others first. Well, what are we waiting for then? Let's go, bucko. Uh, well, you heard Mo, didn't you? You all searched the streets. Wouldn't it be fair to split the responsibilities of who searches what? I mean, that for both of our groups. It doesn't matter where we search. We just need to cover the entire playground. As for us, we kind of have a problem. There's three streets, but only five of us. Well, maybe only one of us needs to check the first street we went on. What's it called again? Barnacle Boulevard. Flippy, would you want to go with someone? Well, I guess it makes sense to... Oh, coach. Actually, I kind of want to talk to you one-on-one. -on -one. Hmm? About what? I don't know. I just feel like I need to sort things out about the whole host crew thing. Huh. Well, I suppose we could talk about it in a light in Lighthouse Lane then. Yeah, that would work. There goes Coach C and Bessie. So, how do we split up? Well, maybe, uh... Well, I've had fun searching for Surly with Pete. So, Flippy, you're up. <sighs> uh, Pete would clearly rather go with Tom. It's fine, Tom. I can search by myself. You sure? Yeah, you two could keep each other company again. <gasps> Works for me. Now we get to see Seaweed Street, Pete. What if there's like a love triangle going on here? Flippy, you didn't have to. Of course I had to, Pete. Come on, I wasn't super sure about things, but seeing how much fun you were having on the boat with Pete, I'm sure you'd much rather be with Tom than, well, alone. Aw. Thank you, Flippy. No problem, Pete. Well, guess I'm alone on this one. Aw, we let the ship sail, literally. My search in Barnacle Boulevard, well, really nothing happened. I searched every single corner, even tried to fish for something. I know I need to stop suspecting something, but I can't help it. However, what I wasn't expecting... Huh? Isn't that... Well, look who's here by himself. Did your team already dissolve? Yikes so. No, we just split up to search for this item Flunky placed for us. Riggy filled me in on the situation. With unnecessary enthusiasm. Oh, please, Surly. A mode like this is super interesting. I bet we're going to see two dead bodies show up soon. Oh, no, we probably will. He's been following me for far too long, Flippy. I see. Well, is there a reason you two search here? The main playground being searched by Toons already. It made sense to search other places. Paula went to Seaweed Street and Harry didn't want to search with us. That short needs to learn to relax, you know? Do you think it's possible Harry was chosen as the one without a partner? Well, maybe. I don't think he'd want to investigate, regardless if he was partnered with anyone or not. Indeed. Figuring out who's partnered with who is going to take some time. What? You planned something? Of course not. Now more than ever, I need to stay safe. <gasps> and that includes not being constantly followed by someone, Riggy. Huh. Well, you don't gotta be so rude about it, Surly. Uh, wait, are those two partners? I think so. That would explain why Riggy's been trying to find Surly, but... I can't be too sure about it. Well, regardless of anything, I'm spent. I don't want to go through the entire street again. I'm dead. I made my way back to the hut, and I just sat near the campfire. Wow, there is a lot going on in this chapter, but I'm loving the motive this time around. It's really good. And I sat by said fire alone. Why? Now that I'm not investigating, all I can think of is that. Everyone's trying their best, but I know I can do better. All I've done is just keep getting worse and worse. Why am I not the confident mayor I know I am? I know I've never had to deal with something so perilous, but I've barely been any sort of leader as of late. Mo and Pete have been trying to be more of a leader than I have, neither of them really wanting to do it. So why should I be allowed to just sit here and do nothing? Tomorrow, I'll step up again, but how would I do that? We have a plan in place now, one that I'm literally breaking right now, being by myself. 
I need to find my group again. I can't be here alone. As I was about to head out, I noticed two tunes approaching me. Ah, there you are, Flippy. Ah, sorry. I bet I was making you all worried, right? You bet. We thought something might have happened to you. I know, I know. Where's Tom and Pete? They're still searching on Seaweed Street, I think. But Flippy, why were you here? I just... I don't know. I couldn't find anything, and lately I just can't figure out how to lead anymore. I haven't actually done much for the group after the trial. No, even in the trial I was struggling. Whoa, 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 Flippy. I didn't mean to shout at you, and you already know you don't have to always be the front runner of everything, right? I know that, Coach. I just can't help but feel bad about not getting all of us out of here. Clara was just so kind to me, and now she's gone. Gone forever. You know you can't blame yourself for that, Flippy. <sighs> yeah, Flippy. I haven't been super great at keeping things together, too, so... But it's my job to protect everyone, and... I've already failed. Ugh. <sighs> Hey, look, Flippy. Huh? I, uh, might not be the mayor, so I guess I don't really know how it feels, but... I don't blame you for anything. No, seriously, everything that happened wasn't because of you. Exactly. Flippy, you yourself told me I couldn't blame myself for not sticking around to catch Clef in the act. But you need to stop blaming yourself for what happened at the pie event, all right? Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's basically what I can't get over still. Coach, I... I damaged Clara so badly. Clef dealt the final blow, but... I dealt the majority of the damage. My last moments with her were nice, but what if she died hating me for putting her in such a perilous situation? Flippy. It's true that you'll never know what she was feeling, however. Your only option is to trust in the last moments you spent with her. Because, well, we don't have an alternative way to know. Very true. You're right. Thank you, Coach C, for always helping me. It's a coach's duty to help those in need. Ah, I love it. I, uh, don't want to break up this conversation, but we should probably find Pete and Tom now. No, you're right, Bessie. We should find them now. True. Let's head out then. What a great team. They're doing all right. Like, that side of the Toon crew is doing okay. The Coach Z, the Bessie, Flippy, Tom, Pete. They're doing all right. Once we return to the dock, we noticed there wasn't just Tom and Pete, but almost everyone there. Well, well, well. Look who returned. I wonder why you simply walked towards the huts by yourself. Huh. Not even following the rules of your dear friend. It's laughable, really. Oh, please. He has Coach and Bessie with him anyways. So, that everyone? Almost everyone. I don't think I need to say anything more. Harry continues to avoid us at all costs. Honestly, it was a bit surprising how long he stayed with us yesterday. Well, that's besides the point. Did anyone find what Flunky hid? Coach and I couldn't find anything. Certainly and I didn't. Flippy didn't look very happy either, so I'm a guess a no from him. I found Pete and Tom happy in Seaweed Street, though not a malicious happy. I, uh, see. The playground search was a bust. We searched through any buildings accessible to us, however, to no avail. However, there was no, there was one issue with our tactics. What do you mean? How likely is it for a duo or a singular tune to have found the item and isn't speaking up about it? Well, I mean, not very high. All was with Pete and I, and Surly and Riggy didn't seem to find anything along with Flippy. And Coach and Bessie got to talk to one another during our street searches, so I could definitely say they're not strangers to one another, though I don't think they were exactly friends. I might have gotten a bit heated, but she was talking about Riggy, but I was only annoyed at her antics, nothing more. I see. And going by the rules of the motive, how your partner has to be someone that either you trust dearly, despise, or barely know. That means you two cannot be partners. However, what about us that stayed at the playground? We were all practically working alone. Huh. If something was found, it would have been quite obvious how someone would react, no? Exactly, which means none of us found it. Great. Oh boy, let me guess. We're going to try searching again tomorrow, aren't we? Yeah. But for now, we should get some rest. We've done enough today. Bah! We're going to be working again tomorrow? Boring. We have to do this for everyone's safety. All right, all right. I'll just have to compensate then. Compensate how? I'm guessing that's the, the nighttime announcement? Yeah. Attention all tunes. It is now 10 p.m. For all of you with a partner, I wonder what you'll do. Nighttime already? It seems so. Huh. So it is. Well, I want to keep searching just a bit more, so you three better follow me. Excuse me? 
I'm exhausted enough. Don't make me agree with Mo of all tunes, Giggles. I just want to quickly check Punchline Place in case that Flunky is trying to trick us or something. And what reason would Flunky have to lie? I'll never trust that dreaded cog. Him being the reason we're all here. If I ever get to see him in person, he'll regret it. He doesn't believe Flunky, yet is still searching for something anyways. Great. I'm not going to let him waste my time. That may be your opinions. However, I'm intrigued to see if he'll find anything of use. I believe you two should follow them. You are a group after all. Ugh, fine. But I'm not staying for long. Ugh. And there goes that group of tunes. Well, I guess we should just go to sleep then. I'm beat. I assume same groups tomorrow? Actually, Tom, if it's okay, would you care to join our team for tomorrow? It's basically a team of three without Harry, and you can rejoin the others if I can get Harry outside. Well, okay. Though after we search tomorrow, I'm going to return to sender. Wow, a temporary party member. Don't call him that. That just sounds disrespectful. Fine, fine. Let's get going then. And there goes that group leaving. Huh. Didn't even ask us before taking Tom, but whatever. Well, at least Tom will return to us tomorrow afternoon. Though, uh, would have been nicer to stay with him. Well, time to go to sleep, partner. Partner? Oh no, Bessie, did you just spill the beans by accident? Wow. Uh, wait, I meant group. Uh, what? Wait a minute. If Coach is my partner, then Bessie's partner is Pete? Uh, no, it's okay, Bessie. I'm fine with telling them. So then, you mean that you two are paired up? Indeed, that's right. Looks like us two were paired in the barely new category. Yuppers, I was kind of surprised you were my partner of all tunes. Though, maybe it's for the better my partner isn't someone I had a stronger connection with. I see. Well, I feel as though us two should share as well. After all, I'm pretty sure we can trust you two. Indeed, I don't see why not. All right, to answer who I was paired up with is quite simple. Flippy and I were actually paired up. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, thank you for trusting us with that. I just wonder who Tom got paired up with. Is it maybe Paula? Maybe. That would make sense why she wanted him to join her team. Well, regardless of anything, we should probably get to sleep. We're going to be searching for a while tomorrow, so make sure you get to get some good sleep. Indeed. And so we all headed to our respective hut. The item is still out there, right? Oh my god, I hope it is. Somebody might have found it, man. With heavy eyes, I didn't take too long for it didn't take too long for me to fall asleep. I think somebody found it. It would only make sense. Attention all tunes. It is now 8 a.m. There isn't anything important to announce. Carry on this day as usual. Well, better meet up with everyone to decide what each of us searches today. The first tune I saw was Ah, good morning, Flippy. Pete, you're quite near my door. Were you about to tell me something? Well, uh, I know it's kind of awkward to ask someone advice for certain things, but lately I've been wondering, purely hypothetical, but is it worth trying to pursue something with someone if we can get out of here? Ah, it's coming. Pursue something? Do you mean like, what are you two doing up so quickly? Ah, just wondering about things. Huh. How specific. We can talk about this later, Pete. Indeed. Congratulations. Now get moving. Fine. Oh my god! Pete is about to drop the bomb! We headed over to the dock where everyone once again met up. I love it. You love to see it. Well, everyone except Harry. Oh, is this going to be another one of those fangans where the gay people die? Can it break that curse? Can this be the fangan that breaks the curse where the gay people survive? So who's going to go where today? Not Toontown Central, that's for sure. We didn't search for that long. It felt like a millennium. Perhaps we should reshuffle our teams, no? Huh? Why so? Wouldn't that be the smartest option? We seem to be splitting up a lot for teams that are supposed to always stick together. How about we mix and match tunes? That does hold some ground. If possible, I can try to get Harry from the huts. I wouldn't need a partner for that. Would that work? What? Of course you need a partner, bucko. Here, how about I go with you? He clearly doesn't want to go with you, so back off. Would Surly even need a partner for that? He's not going to be in the dock itself. Ugh. Alrighty then. Actually, I know just what to do. See you tunes later. 
Wait, wait, Riggy. Ah, you guys. Huh. And with Surly's plan to get Harry, we're down to nine. How grand, Pete. Hey, don't be mean to Pete. We just, uh, let me think. Two there, two there, and two there. Ah, I got it. Two tunes per street and two for the playground. You forgot someone, Tom. Oh my gosh. You're not, you gotta do the math, Tom. You gotta do the math. Ooh, right. Forgot myself. Make it three for the playground. All right, so then who will go where? I, uh, it's all right if you go with Paula on this one, Tom. Okay, then. How about Lighthouse Lane, Paula? That works for me. I haven't seen it yet. So, uh, who's next? I'm not dealing with Giggles, Toontown Central searching. I'm going to Seaweed Street. I wasn't planning on searching there today anyways. Only the street to TTC. I shall accompany Giggles then. Perhaps you'll find what you seek. <laughs> Fine. With old man and Giggles leaving. Well, and you four? Yeah, no, I'm staying right here. And I, I uh, need to ask Flippy something. Fine, I'll go with Mo. You better actually search, you got that? Ugh, this is going to be a long day. It's only gonna feel that way if you keep up that attitude. Just keep moving, coach. Ugh. Huh. You better actually help. Well, I doubt we have any reason to actually search. The funny haha -ha giggle squad searched literally everywhere and none of us found anything. Maybe, but you never know if you missed something. Fair, fair. I guess it's time to do another circling around. Indeed. Let's do at least some searching before discussing any potential finds. And thus, us three searched the playground. I searched everywhere outside I could, including some of the ocean. After what was probably a few hours, Pete approached me. Well, I haven't found anything yet, have you? No dice, Pete. No dice. Well, at least we're trying. I have a feeling we won't find anything. However, that's not what I came to tell you. I mean, yes, I was going to tell you I didn't find anything, but you know what I mean. About wanting to pursue someone after the killing game? Yeah. On one hand, I'm absolutely terrified. We probably have so many cases to go through before this game ends. But if we can all just find a way to break Flunky's game or find a secret escape, I would be so happy to survive with... Um, we know, we know it's Tom. Pete, are you talking about Tom? Yep, I was right on the money. I guess I wasn't exactly being subtle, was I? But my point still stands. I'm absolutely terrified now. I know the odds of everything being okay are very slim. Horrifically slim, even. Maybe, maybe I only thought I could lose literally anyone and be okay. Because I couldn't remember anyone from my past. Because I don't know what I'd do if, if Tom... Pete, I... No, I know how low the chances of both of us making it out alive. You don't need to sugarcoat it. I see. However, I'll do whatever I can to protect not just you and Tom, but everyone. I promised myself before we went to our huts that I'd step up this morning, but I didn't. If anything, you're becoming this group's leader more than me, even if you don't realize it. Oh, I love it. I love it. I mean, I am? Your drive to protect what you hold dear expands to everyone, Pete. Coach Z and Bessie have been helping me, but Clara, she really was someone I could relate to. So maybe things might look bad, but the only thing we could do is just our best, isn't it? You're right, Flippy. But you don't have to always strive for perfection, okay? After all, mistakes are just part of the learning process. Eh, I suppose it is, Pete. And you're right. I know you're right. But I can't just stop thinking I need to be the best mayor out there. I unfortunately can't relate to that kind of pressure, but perhaps we what we need right now is to just distract ourselves by searching. Indeed. Aw, what a heartfelt moment. I kept on searching, checking out with Pete and Lou here and there. However, none of us found anything. Eventually, everyone returned. But even after so many hours of searching, no one had found anything. Somebody has it, bro. Well, while all of you were wasting your time, Riggy wanted to make a trampoline, but he couldn't find the materials for one. So, we made a picnic. You two are hosting once more? Oh, no, 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 no. It's just a simple picnic. I spent a lot of time convincing Riggy that there wasn't anything he could use as a trampoline, so it's all we could do. I don't trust this. I don't trust this at all. I feel like something bad is going to happen in this picnic. Is the food poisoned? But uh, we kind of don't actually have any food, so... Yeah. So in other words, you have nothing. Huh. All of you are just plain useless. Why'd I even bother? 
I'd rather rest alone at this point. Hmm. You didn't even search. You only tried to get Harry. Actually, did you even try for that long? I'll admit that I didn't try for much time. However, I can say he's alive. That's good, at least. Well, anyways, who's coming? I mean, it'd be nice to just unwind after a search. You know what? I'll go too. Same here. I would want to see what you set up after searching the street back and forth five times. Then let's both join them. Eh, I don't want to deal with Riggy. Mo was enough. Eh, maybe I could check it out a bit. Just for a bit. Got nothing better to do. So, any others? No one else said anything. Alrighty then, let's go, buckos. Picnic time! Yay! And thus the seven of us headed to Toontown Central. And at the playground we found. This is the picnic? Oh my gosh. Well, what you think? It's actually quite nice. Didn't expect the props from the speedway. I mean, that is kind of cool. Yeah, I agree 100%. Oh, nice. Others did like it. Hmm. And you doubted the Supreme Party Planner, Bessie O'Pal? Well, I mean, uh, I just don't know how to think about you anymore, Briggy. And that's the problem. Thinking. Well, uh, putting that aside. Just how has everyone been? After two days of searching, we still don't know where Flunky hid. Whatever he hid. Wait, wait, wait. I haven't unveiled the surprise. Surprise? Well, you weren't looking, Bessie. Ta-da! Oranges! Uh, where did you find oranges of all things, Riggy? From my daily meals. Wait, really? I don't remember ever getting oranges. Do we all get different meals each day? I never actually asked what others were eating. Since I usually get fish-related dishes. Which, saying out loud, kind of just confirmed that I don't think everyone is a fan of fish. I've only gotten fish twice, so it seems we have been given different meals each day. So are we just going to stare at these, or... Of course not! Today we feast! A feast of four oranges? What the heck are we going to do with those? I feel like this is a bad idea. I don't like those oranges. Well, let's split these four as evenly as we can. Ricky split the oranges among our group, with Tom getting a full one. I think Tom's going to get poisoned. I think Tom's going to get poisoned! Hmm, even though I've also gotten oranges too, they're still so good. I'm surprised you actually had food for us. Though, uh, could I eat this later? Not really in the orange mood now. Oh no, now people are eating it! Not a fan of oranges? Uh... Okay, not really, but fruit is fruit. I'm not gonna turn down free food. Fair enough. Also, Tom, careful not to choke on any pulp. You're going through that whole orange a bit too fast. I'm... I'm empty. Huh? Maybe we haven't been able to find what Flunky's trying to bait us with. But maybe that's for the best. Just like Pete, I'm incredibly worried about what might happen. However, at times like these, we just have to enjoy the parts we can. Uh-oh, and isn't Tom paired with uh, Paula? They were both at the picnic. We enjoyed our time together, even if Riggy's enthusiasm was a bit much. Eventually. Uh, after most of us left, it was just Pete, Tom, and me again. Mm-hmm, oranges are the best. So, what should we do now? Well, Tom, there's something I wanted to ask you. A question? Well, actually, it's not a question, but a promise. Simply put, let's keep watch of each other's backs, all right? Uh, well, of course. I got your back and you got mine. I suppose I should have figured you thought that already, but I have to say it officially, it's nice. And that goes for you too, Flippy. I got your back too. <laughs> Thanks, Tom. I guess we should try to search just a bit more in places. So maybe we should just stay here. Ooh, ooh, I know. We could walk and flap our arms like crazy. <laughs> right here? Yeah, come on, Pete. All right, all right. I thought it was best to just give Pete a nod in his direction and leave them be. Aw. I hope Tom doesn't die, man. I'm feeling the curse. The curse is a place that's going to be upon us, y'all. I kind of feel hungry after searching and only getting half an orange. Maybe the gag shop has something. The freaking curse. Hmm, a bunch of money as always. I didn't find any food in those boxes while searching. And we know there's nothing behind there because of Pete. I guess I shouldn't have expected anything. Oh, what? Huh? Oh, hey, Flippy. Did you come here for food? Something tells me you didn't eat your orange. Hmm. Okay. Can you blame me? I was just going to throw it away in front of him. So, is there anything in here? No, doesn't look like it. Well, that's a bummer. Well, I guess there's no point being in here. 
I'm gonna head out. I'll keep searching for food. You do that. Maybe there's something I missed. I mean, all right, I guess. Well, I doubt I'll find anything edible, but I might as well do a room search again. I guess I can start with these boxes. Wait, what's in this corner? There's just this clean jar in the corner. I don't remember that being here. Well, there's no label, but this is just odd. Hmm. Maybe I could use this container for our future garden. Oh, that'd be so cool. Might be a bit basic, but maybe we could put a bunch of flowers in it. Yeah, though I have no idea how old this water is. I should first rinse it with fresh water. Yay. I rinsed the container in the TTC fountain. Keep me some water in it so it'd hopefully keep cleaning while I'm gone. I'll just put it back where I found it. No, after running around, I'm honestly spent. I headed back to my hut. At this point, I don't know what time of day it is, but I could use a nap. I'm probably going to wake up super early, but I don't mind. Oh, man. Tomorrow is going to be another day of searching, but maybe I should convince the others that we should give up on the search. I don't know. I trust... What? What the heck was that? What the heck? Am I hearing something? What time is it? Let me check the door, just in case someone's there. I got up and went to the door. Hello? Whoa! Somebody's kidnapping me! Somebody's kidnapping me! Somebody's freaking kidnapping me! Sometime yesterday. What? What is happening? How? Surly? How are you communicating with me? The radar system of this machine. Really? You're actually using it to do this? Yes, that is a fact. And I'm supposed to just trust you without knowing who you are? I guess I have to prove I'm on your side. Yes, of course I'd like some proof you're not on the COG side. Isn't me warning you to stay safe enough? You implemented some sort of chip in my ear and you expect me to trust you? I never did that. You didn't? Then how were you able to intercept to any sort of signal that I'd be emitting? I couldn't do it alone, but I got someone to help me. Are they with you right now? As a matter of fact, yes. However, I don't think you're going to believe this. Pass the radar to them. <sighs> All right. I was the one that helped them out, Surly. Oh! Is it the doctor that we saw in the flashback? I see. Out of all the possibilities. The one that helped you figure this out. Oh, sh**. Was me. What? What? Wait, what? What? what, 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 what? Present day. Attention all tunes. It is now 8 a.m. I have nothing to announce at this moment. Carry on this day as usual. Wait, I- Wait, 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 wait. Uh, Am I Surly now? Hmm. Surly awoke as usual, getting up from his bed. Why did Flucky state this moment? Making his way outside. Wait, pro tag switch? At least change the perspectives. The first two to exit their huts were. Ah, hello you two. Did either of you notice Flunky's wording of his announcement? You noticed it too, old man? Indeed, I did. Could it be Flunky is going to provide another motive today? He better not. We have enough to deal with. Let's first gather at the dock before we prepare for what's most likely that. I agree with this sentiment. Okay, so what the heck happened to Flippy, bro? Surly, Old Man, and Coach Z all went through the, to the tunnel to doc, Donald's dock. But what was waiting for them? Don't tell me. Do not. Was a horrifying sight. Do not tell me it's Flippy, bro. But he's not dead. Lou's not dead, though. It's time to... They're all knocked out. And Tom is dead. The freaking curse. <gasps> the curse. The curse lives on. Oh, my God. I can't stand these fan cans, man. Y'all will not let one gay ship last. It's so horrible. Four tunes on the ground. With one thing for certain, Tom 
was dead. <sighs> God, man, we just can't have nice things in this gay community, bro. When it comes to Danganronpas and you mix it with gay people, it just never works out. It never works out. With that being said, I truly, truly appreciate you guys watching this episode. This was a ton of fun. Man, this fan get is so cool. Great motive, great writing. The dialogue in this is fantastic. So if you guys are so good at making this fan gan, you did an amazing job. I'm loving being able to choose the choices or whatnot, making decisions, even though there's like not many decisions to make. It's still cool that that is there, you know? With that being said, thank you guys for watching this video. Do not forget to hit that like button. Comment down below your thoughts on this video and subscribe if you're new. I'll see you guys next time. Deuces. Hope will never die. Orale.